continue the lecture series on the conceptual framework for financial reporting and this lecture is going to be incredibly important as it deals with with the objective of general purpose financial reporting now the objective is the foundation of the entire conceptual framework other aspects all flow logically from this objective and the objective will lead into qualitative characteristics of useful information the elements of financial statements will be defined based on the objective the recognition criteria presentation and disclosure all led out by the objective so understand what this objective is all about so here we're only going to deal with the 2010 the new updated objective the objective of general purpose financial reporting is to provide financial information about the reporting entity please note they haven't finished defining what that reporting entity is but it is one of the phases that they are working on so the objective to provide financial information about the reporting entity that is useful to existing and potential investors as well as as, as well as lenders and other creditors so what are the what is this information going to be useful for well it's useful in making decisions about providing resources to the entity now I've left a couple of the main points blank for you to fill out so that you know if you put pen to paper you have a better chance of, as, of remembering these things so just to recap the objective of general purpose financial reporting is to provide information about the reporting entity that is useful to existing and potential investors lenders and other creditors in making decisions about whether or not they should provide resources to the entity now what decisions are we referring to well the investors lenders or suppliers of credit will either buy sell or hold equity and debt and or debt instruments so and or debt instruments that's for the equity or debt investors and the lenders or suppliers of credit will either provide or settle loans and credit now buying or selling debt or equity instruments that's going to be based on whether the investors expect a good return from holding those instruments now those expectations are going to be linked about to their assessment of the future timing amounts and uncertainty of cash inflows so just to contribute to this debate that happened around this objective definition the new framework is more focused on certain assumptions well the focus here is that the primary users are investors and creditors no longer as was the old 1989 framework where it referred to a wide range of users which could be anyone also the investors needs are no longer just decision making but we specifically said that decision is about the resource allocation whether that investor will supply capital in the form of equity or debt so the political debate goes around this objective is starting to point towards fair value accounting and remember here I'm talking about full IFRS not IFRS for SMEs so what did come up as a debate was whether the stewardship function should be included as part of the objective 
The original 2010 framework draft did not have any mention of the stewardship function, but it has been, the essence of it has now been brought in as a discussion. Now, just to remember what stewardship means, stewardship is a measure of how efficiently and effectively the entity's management and governing board have discharged their responsibilities to use the resources that were given to them in the form of the company. So now that is very historical cost focused, but the new objective does still make mention of stewardship, not as prevalently as the old framework did. What is important to note, and it's, it's stated quite clearly in the framework here, is that financial reports are based on estimates and judgments. You know, how long do you depreciate an item of PPE for? How do you measure the fair value of a private company? Those are estimates and professional judgments as required. Now, the conceptual framework establishes the concepts that underlie those estimates and judgments. This is not a perfect accounting system, but the ISB is striving to improve. There is no underlying um, theory for accounting. Now, many of the other sciences, social sciences, um, have underlying theories. Economics has multiple underlying theories that contrast with each other in many aspects, but accounting, that hasn't actually been defined. We don't know what is the theory of accounting. Okay? The framework is trying to create something towards that and give you an underlying framework to work with. So to leave you on this note, I want you to think of this. Who uses full IFRS financial statements? Well, mainly that is going to be investors, either in debt or equity, of listed companies. Now, that investor is going to want to know about what are the assumed future cash flows and therefore he is going to be very interested in fair values. Now the objective points us towards who are the primary users, investors, okay? And what decisions are they going to use information for? Well, they're going to use it to, on, to decide whether or not to allocate resources to their company. And that allocation decision is going to be based on their expected returns. The best way for them to calculate those expected returns is they're going to need to understand the fair value of assets and liabilities, etc. Yes, they will still probably use an earnings model to value, but the fair values will help them a great deal. That's very different to small companies that are private companies, the local butcher. Their local butcher is not worrying about fair value, and therefore a totally different standard has been developed for them than the IFRS for SMEs. That is to be dealt with in a different discussion. Thank you.